Hey guys and ladies, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video or another live stream, I should say. What's going on, everybody? I figured, you know what? Uh, I've had some people complain that they can't view they can't view the streams because of uh, time zone differences. So I figured, what the heck? It's late at night here. It's about oh, a little past ten thirty, and I uh, figured, what a great time for an impromptu stream. And one thing that I did not do uh, the first year that I had my channel that Valentine's Day rolled around is I did not do a Valentine's Day list. Uh, so I figured, what the heck? Why not talk about some fragrances that uh, I think would be uh, neat for a frag head to wear during Valentine's Day? Something that uh, is, you know, a little bit different than what the average person is wearing. Uh, you know, if, if you're the person who wears one fragrance uh, a year and then you just buy yourself another bottle, obviously these won't work for you. But uh, I'm glad to see some people actually here. I figured maybe I'd be talking to myself for you know, most of the video, since it's just a random, uh, you know, I like to just kind of randomly put these up. I guess I should try to plan this better so more people can be here. But uh, th thanks for being here, Jossie. Welcome. Hey, Dunk. What's up, man? You playing pool? Ah, greetings from Bangkok. Beautiful. Paul's selection. Lovely. Well, good morning to you too, Natalia. One of your favorite fragrances is in this list, by the way. Ah, Woozy's in the house. Hello, hello. Old boy, welcome. Ah, uh, yes. Ram, uh, Andy, good to see you, man. You can see I'm still in my work clothes, even though it's a Valentine's Day whisk. Even though it's a Valentine's Day list, I am wearing black. It's a, it's a wedding. Actually, I'm going to get some blotters because we're going to smell these today, too, which I don't always do. But, uh... Whenever I do a top 10, whenever I do a top 10, I figure, what the heck? Um, you might as well sniff these bad boys while we're chatting about them. So what's everyone sent to the day? I actually rocked uh, a fragrance I have not worn in over a year. This is one of the downfalls of having a, <laughs> I just saw Enrique's uh, message. This is one of the downfalls of having a big collection is you, you know, uh, just because of how it works out, you know, you can't wear everything. If you have over 365 fragrances, you can only wear them once a year. Think about that. So you really have to make an effort to wear your favorites. And today I wore a fragrance that I have not worn in over a year. And this is actually called uh, Bois 1920 Vetiver. Ambrato. And this is a beautiful vetiver, amber, patchouli, uh, tobacco. It, um, the dry down, you know, the opening will actually give you little hints of uh, vintage Guerlain vanilla, almost like a touch of Shalimar. And yes, you know, it's okay to compare fragrances to old Guerlains. Don't, don't get your panties in a wad. You can do that. It's okay. Uh, I'm not saying this is Shalimar. Don't jump off the cliff. I'm just saying that the vanilla in the opening uh, and the amber in the opening will give you that oriental, um, you know, Shalimar type vibe, but it dries down completely different. It's actually a really nice fragrance. And I um, basically boycotted this house after the whole Rich Mitch, Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum um, fiasco, where he bought an, an Eau de Toilette. The older versions of um, Bois 1920 are in Eau de Toilette. And uh, what they ended up doing is they ended up reformulating them and putting them in Eau de Parfum boxes. And so he bought in what said Eau de Toilette on the box, but what arrived was an Eau de Parfum. And, you know, the brand refused to do anything about it because it, he bought it through Amazon or something. Uh, and, you know, but it was like a new, it wasn't, you know, used, uh, used or anything. And so it was just kind of like a cop out for them. They were like, oh, it's third party. Sorry, we can't help you. And so ever since then, I was like, well, fuck this brand. I'm not buying anything from them anymore. I'll just sit with what I have. And this is one of the ones that I had. And I actually really like Vetiver Ambrato. It gets almost no love in the community, but if you like that oriental, um, 
you know, ambery. Uh, there is some vetiver in here, but I would say it's um, it's more. It's actually to me, it's more about this lavender patchouli with this, um, you know, tobacco uh, oriental like dry down. It's really nice though. Very good fragrance. Un completely underrated. No one talks about it. Love the Ram Dizzle. Thanks, Andy. Just got done shooting pool on lunch break, flying to Texas on Valentine's Day. Nice. It's good stuff. I hate flying. Oh, I despise flying. I'd, I'd rather drive eight hours, I think, than fly. For some reason, I find Valentine's Day is the one day where I don't mind wearing or smelling mainstream mass appealing scents. <laughs> uh, I know what you mean. Um, Valentine's Day is one of my most hated holidays because I often think that, you know, it's this corporate concocted holiday to try to sell flowers and balloons and all this stuff. And, you know, if you want to show someone you love them, you can do it every single day. You don't have to, you don't need a special corporatized holiday for that. Please no parfum de Marley. So, okay. Interesting story. Um, somebody reached out and said I was very offensive to them. And I basically said that, uh, well, it's my channel and I'm going to say whatever the hell I want. And I think juvenile, fra I think sweet fragrances are juvenile. And if you don't like that, you're in the wrong channel, buddy. Uh, and of course, I got all of the um, all of the insults hurled at me that, you know, it's an alpha channel and we're not very welcoming here. And I'm like, well, you know, I say what I want to say. I say good things about fragrances I love, I say bad things about fragrances I hate. And, you know, you shouldn't associate yourself with the fragrance. I'm not attacking you. I say something bad about a fragrance that you love. I'm not saying anything bad about you as a person. And if you're that uh, intertwined with your perfume or someone you don't even know on the internet saying something bad about it hurts your feelings, you probably shouldn't be watching these videos or streams. Good morning from Germany. Wow. Good to see you, Robin. My Valentine scent will be a czar actor, you know. That's actually a really good shout. I'm gonna put that as an honorary mention. I'm not going to, um, I'm not gonna put it to the list, but I am gonna put it as an honorary mention because it almost made the list. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite rose fragrances. And uh, it's really good. It's a great masculine rose. And actually, um, Rose, shout out to Eugene's uh, little postcard for La Dule Exquise. Surprise, surprise, it'll be one of the, 10 fragrances on the list. Um, Rose is the fragrance that most people think of. So there's a lot of fragrances in this list that have the note of rose. However, there are a handful that don't, don't have any rose. Uh, and they more hint to this older style, you know, vintage. Um, I'm going to say some of them share some old school love stories from the past. And we'll talk about those. And, you know, some of them maybe have this animalic, maybe you already jumped to like Valentine's day night, you know, and you've already, uh, and you've already had some fun and you're smelling a little bit animalic. Some of them have a little bit of that in there as well. So this will be a fun list. Let me catch up on the comments. Greetings from Germany. Well, good to see you. Sim Symphora Rosa. Nice, uh, very nice name. Glad to see you in the stream. I don't think I've seen you before. Trying Emoir's Lineage on skin today. Really enjoying it so far. Which one was Lineage? Is that the one with the uh, hazelnut? That's the other one. It's the uh, Karin Vinchon Spanner. I did not care for that one as much. Uh, I thought it was probably the most unique of all four that came out. Um, but I don't know. There was something about it that just didn't, didn't do it for me, but it was definitely the most unique. I'm spending Valentine's with my niece and my parents this year, skiing and snowshoeing. That's awesome. That sounds actually really fun. Good morning, Juro. Welcome. Scent of the day, Filtre Silent by Atelier Cologne, a nice tea scent. Ah, so I could have made my tea list yesterday, huh? Sent to the night, Bellam, bottle on the way. Congrats, Jussie. That's good stuff. I'm glad to hear it. 
Melt My Heart, definitely in the top five. Um, you know, Melt My Heart. Um, did I do a video on that one yet? I can't remember. Uh, let's see. Melt My Heart. That's the strange love, right? Yeah, I could I I could see what you mean there. Um I think I did a I think I did a video on Melt My Heart recently. No, it's actually not on the list, but interesting shout, Paolo. Sent to the night for Sachi Udnoir. I really like that, Mike. Not gonna lie. For somebody who just wants to wear, you know, just a easy to wear food fragrance. It's actually really nice. No scent of the day yet, just rolled out of bed. Nice. Yeah, that's right. I figured I'd do this at a different time so you guys could join. Nasomato Pardon. That's a beautiful patchouli. Spirited Dubai D1. I don't think I've smelled that one yet. Uh, is that from the second collection? It is. It is from the second collection. Yeah, that's on my uh, to sniff list. That is on my to sniff list. But I've yet to smell it. Hello, guys. From work, as always. Yes, that's right. Ah, the blue bottle of Hedis. It's a beautiful fragrance. That could even be on this list. It's so beautiful. Best thing about Valentine's is you can get discounts and deals on fragrances. <laughs> yes, that's right. I don't think sweet is inherently juvenile music for a while is insanely sweet. You know, that's a really good shout, Woozy. Um, maybe it's just the way some brands do sweet. Um, you know, the, there were vent, there were scents that did sweet back in the day that I didn't find juvenile. So maybe I'm just associating it with, with some of the modern brands. I, I don't know, but, um, many of the modern ways that sweet is done, I, I do associate as juvenile, but fair point, very fair point, Woozy. <laughs> yeah. If you don't like the content here, that's it. But that's it right there. I mean, I just, you know, it's it's uh it's pretty amazing to me, you know, and I'm like I'm like, dude, I'm I'm like writing you about this at work on my Instagram. You know what I mean? Like it's just uh, it's not my thing at all. I don't get into that stuff. Like it's 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 crazy. Some people are just they're just extra I'd like the a lot more Zerjoff if they all didn't have the same sweet vanilla Tonka amber dry down. They even messed up Casamarati Fiero. I I know what you mean with brands that do that. They have that, um, you know, they have that uh, similar dry down, and usually it has that vanilla sweet bit, mass appealing vanilla sweet bit. Hello, Flippo. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Sticks. You're very kind. Well, you've helped add to the uh, collection. So, ah, that's very kind of you. Thank you, Paolo. I appreciate that, my friend. Yeah, I don't think music for a while is juvenile at all. That's right. Uh, melt my heart. Yeah, that's the dark chocolate Woody. I did a video on it recently, I think, because I'm hoping to have. Um, I am hoping to have uh, Elizabeth Gaines, the founder of Strange Love, on the channel sooner or later. There are different types of sweet. Yeah, that's that's it right there. That's pretty much what I was trying to say. Um, I think music for a while is, you know, probably an outlier in their ability to do sweet and have it not come across as, as really juvenile. The other way that I've smelled some sweet fragrances lately that I don't think are juvenile are the way that someone like, um, you know, if you smell Nishane Nefs or some of the Spirit of Dubai fragrances, for example, even though they have that Middle Eastern sweetness to them, 
I don't find them necessarily as juvenile as something like Calvin Klein reveal or some of the Parfum de Marley's. Even this, I mean, I wore this for the first time just the other night, uh, this Parfum de Marley Go Dolphin. And even though it's clearly a Tuscan leather clone, it even has this underlying sweetness that you don't get in Tuscan leather. So it doesn't have the extra cigarette ashy dirtiness, but it does have this underlying sweetness. And that's just a staple of those brands. Nice to see you, Rick. <laughs> Every, every, everywhere I go, man, what can I say? Sometimes I, sometimes I feel like I'm the nicest guy in the world. And sometimes I feel like everything I say offends somebody, but you know what? I do this for me and uh, I love portrayal, man. I do this for me and hanging out with you guys and the love of fragrances. And if some people don't like it, I said this in uh, Eugene's interview with, uh, you know, Antoine Lee, when there was that troll there trying to start trouble, I was like, hey, I say what I like about what I like, and I say what I hate about what I hate, and if you don't like it, or we'll do the the double salute. Yeah, I think, I think you guys are hitting the nail on the head. That's spot on, Aroma from Heaven. I love your new profile pic, by the way. I also love how much you you fell in love with Teatro Alla Scala. I have not smelled tea rose, Caleb, but it's good to see you here for the first time. The middle of lineage has a weird... I thought it was weird, too. Um, I actually agree. I don't know if you got a chance to watch my first impression on those four new amouages, but instantly I said lineage was the most uh, unique of the bunch. But I agree, there was something very strange about it. I, I don't think I would I don't think I would wear it. I don't think I would enjoy wearing it even, but um I can appreciate it for, for what it was trying to do. I give Kareen Vinchon Spinner, you know, props for trying to do something different. Van Cleef and Arpels Poor Home. Uh oh, Van Cleef and Arpels Poor Home for me. Aramis 900 is very good though. Those are not on the list, but they easily could have been. Those two right there, Robin, um, they're they're right up with Actor for some of my favorite masculine roses. But uh, I didn't want to make this list too uh, masculine leaning, so I tried to mix in some feminine fragrances as well. Snowshoeing doesn't really sound fun. I can't say I've ever snow snowshoed, but then again, I've never skied. I mean, you know, I'm kind of a kind of a homebody. How's the shill? <laughs> That's me. I'm the shill. Have you tried Tony Iommi Monkey Special? Someone asked me that the other day. I have a sample of it. Eventually, I'll get to it. Um, I um yeah, I have a I have a sample of a bunch of Zerzhovs. See, I think these right here that you can are all Zerzhovs right here. So there's gonna be a bunch of these live stream early, you know, first impression videos. I still have a couple zoologists. Maybe we'll knock those out today too. Maybe we should get rolling on this list. But yeah, I didn't really like the other three. They weren't bad. But I didn't think they were bad necessarily. I just thought they were appealing to a whole new audience. They're trying to get the college kids. They're trying to get the, um, you know, they're trying to become more mainstream. I felt like that's what it felt like to me. Um, like they weren't, they weren't going for the complex perfumery that Christopher Chong used to go for. They were, they were going for a completely different audience segmentation. It's not us. I'll tell you that. I think the lavender balances it too. I think I think music for a while is a is a almost a brilliant stroke of brilliance. B six eight three. I've never smelled that, Rick. Ah, I love Burberry London. I'm not gonna lie. That's I actually have two bottles of it. I love it so much. Uh, I think it's a fantastic designer. The Jardin de Monsieur Lee. I have not smelled that one. Ah, there you go. Duncan Duncan got a signed bottle.
Oh man, dude, you are listing off some some all time classics. Some of my favorite fragrances of all time. You just listed right there. If those are your first sniffs of Abbey Rouge, Jou, Epic Mitzman, and Shalimar, you are in for a treat, my friend. A serious treat. You're in for a nosegasm. Rosier, Amber, Amber Oud, Zenya, Indonesian Oud, and some Valentine, Valentine are some Valentine options, in my opinion, since of the day. Amber Oud, nice. Yeah, I definitely agree on uh, Rosier's Amber Oud. Uh, Zenya, Indonesian Oud, I've never smelled. You're going to enjoy it. Watching of these is the most worn perfume since you start. Which of these is the most worn? Uh, probably Aventus because I went through multiple bottles of Aventus. Oud would have only went through one bottle. Overture. Nice. I love Overture. Overture man, I assume. Sticks, bro. When you finish the live, check your Instagram. I just got it, Paolo. Thank you. It's very kind of you. Paolo said he'd hook me up with a sample of D1. That'll be a fun video. I'll send you my address when this is done. Uh, there, that's one that was almost going to be on the list, but I decided to go with something different. Or T for two last night because you discussed Ocean Jambra. Are they redundant? I actually don't know. I've never smelled T for two. Someone mentioned that it smells like Plum Jap and M7 in the dry down. Wow. I've never smelled Plum Jap. Uh, M7. I don't think, I, I never would have thought M7. No. I would say no to that. If you're talking about Ocean Jambra, I've never smelled tea for two. Music for a while, dry down at six hour mark to smell like dirt, potting soil. I don't remember that. I'll have to wear that again soon. All right, let's start this list. So number 10, we're going to go with the fragrance that I rarely talk about on the channel, quite frankly, because I don't like it. Um, and... Well, maybe I just don't like it yet is the only thing, but I'm actually thinking about selling the bottle just because I just think it's honestly not for me. But uh, it's a fragrance that really fits the uh, time that we're in for Valentine's Day. At least I think it fits. It's a Hermes. And actually, I'm going to spray some here. It's got a, it definitely has the Valentine's Day label. I'll tell you that. It's got the red label. And this is Rouge Hermes. You know, smelling it on the paper, it actually smells better now than the way that I remember it on me when I sprayed it on my skin previously. When I sprayed it on my skin previously, um, it was very, you know, the way that Eugene described it to me, actually, when he told me about it, was perfect. He said it's like a, a big floral with claws. That's the way he described Rouge Rouge Hermes. Uh, now, I don't have the older bottle. This is a more modern bottle, but I found Hermes does good reformulations. But, you know, if you're truly a purist, the previous bottle actually was all red. So it was all Rouge. Um, and it is a big floral. Smelling it now again, I think maybe I dismissed this too soon. It's um, Iris, Rose, and Elaine with resin, sandalwood, vanilla, cedar, labdanum, and myrrh. I'm getting a lot more of the sandalwood on paper and the resins. Uh, initially on skin, I got a ton of florals, like headache-inducing florals. Actually, it kind of is giving me a headache again now, though. That's, I think, one of the things that put me off the first time that I, that I, I've only sprayed it once since I got it, and I went, whoa, that is uh, big. But for Valentine's Day, uh, this does fit the mark. It's got the Valentine's Day feel, if you will. Um, there's a little bit of that underlying sexiness, you know, that you're going to go out on the town and you're going to be dressed to the nines. And I could totally see just a gorgeous woman wearing this or a guy, you know, but I think it probably leans more traditionally feminine. Um, I got to spend more time with this. Does anyone have experience with Rouge Hermes? You should do a sweet list. Yes, I, sh I should. You're right. That's a great idea, Woozy. I'm going to make a note of that. 
Your idea is going in the book, sir. Once it's in the book, that's it. It's gospel. Sweet list it is. Ah, sent of the day interlude, man. One of my favorites. Welcome, Michael. Only praline caramel fragrance I can enjoy is Golden Oud by Amber Oud. I've never smelled it, but there is a praline note in um, Abbey Rouge uh, dress code. And I actually really like that flanker. It's a shame it's discontinued. It is sweet, but um, it's a really good, it's a well done designer flanker. There's a sweet fragrance I like that I think does lean slightly more juvenile than like, let's say, music for a while, but not as juvenile as some of the stuff we were talking about previously. Pasha Parfum is very close to music for Pasha Parfum. It's only missing the juicy pineapple. I never got that FCM. I'll have to wear it again, though. It's been a while. Today with Narciso Rodriguez for him. Beautiful. In the rain. That's beautiful, Omar. I've heard good things about Narciso. Uh, get the EDT. There's so much passion fruit and monkey special for me. Wish they amped up the tobacco. Interesting. Today I received YSL Blue Electric and Liquid Imaginaries Navis. Uh, I've never smelled Blue Electric. And Liquid Imaginaries, I don't think that's a brand I've ever sniffed either. Escal is the only Zerjoff I could kind of like. And that's because it was an attempt at mashing Shalimar and Jiki together. Yeah, that, that smells like a winner to me. Does 1 million Privé have Crawley? I don't think so. Uh. uh, no. Red Mandarin, Orange, Cinnamon, Shisha, Tobacco, Myrrh, Tonka Bean, Absolute, and Patchouli, according to Parfumo. Kingdom Alexandri Alexander McQueen. I've never smelled that, Ali, but someone said they're sending me a sample. Hey, Alan. Evening. Evening, sir. Good to see you, my friend. London stands up today. I've never smelled that. Tom Ford London, never, never smelled it. Goat? You are on that goat, Alan. What's it? You'll have to tell me what it's like. Send me a message and tell me what it's like. About to start the day, center of the day, going to be Yategon. Oh, I love Yategon, man. I'm working in, but for Valentine's Eve, Ted Lapidus, poor Louis. I don't think I've smelled that one. But thanks for, thanks for sharing, Baptiste. Hey, Jimmy. Welcome, my friend. And watch Jubilation Woman. That, that could have been on this list. Um, that's a beautiful fragrance. Going to rock Gucci Guilty Absolute for Valentine's Day. My wife hates it. Nope, I don't care. I love it. I was going to do an anti-Valentine's Day list. Actually, there was a couple on here that might, you know, put some people off. Um, This, Ru this Rouge Herm Hermes has given me a headache now twice. I've smelled it twice, and now both times it's kind of made my head hurt. I don't know what it is. I don't know what ingredient in it is doing that to me. I, I still may decide to sell it. Put on some Ombre Rousse. Yes, exactly. One of the best Amber. 3,000 subs coming up quick, right? I should do a 3,000 sub video. What should I do? You know, if any of the Amwash fragrances are being discontinued, I don't. I mean, I think some of the Opus fragrances are the ones that don't have the names after them. Uh, so the ones that were given names are staying. The ones that don't have the names, I think, are getting the axe. Hey, Nikki, good to see you. I'm going to go check my P.O. box today or uh, tomorrow, and I think your package might be there. Yeah, Amber Roos is one of the best Ambers. Lick the stream. Do you like Rokobar? Love it. Yes, Rokobar is one I can definitely get behind. Feels so natural. You know, I've got an older splash bottle. It's fantastic. It really gives me this outdoor vibe, you know. Like, I feel like I'm, uh, it's like, it's, but what's funny about it is there's a little bit of some 90s fragrance in there. You know, there's a little bit of this, uh, I had this out for some reason. I was getting the, getting the cat hair off me. Um, 
there's a little bit of this 90s freshness in Roca Bar. I think it's a great fragrance. It's just, for me, it's so overshadowed by um, Bellamy. I mean, anytime I think Hermes, I think of two fragrances I want to wear constantly. Eau de Hermes and Bellamy. So sometimes, you know, Roca Bar gets left behind. Licked. Trumper, sandalwood, cologne, some beauty valve. Vlad, sorry. Classy wear. Yeah, really good fur balsam in it for sure. Very outdoorsy. I love it. Good morning, Scott. Portitos are the only beastly florals that give me a headache. Portitos gives you a headache. That's a shame. I've never smelled for Ka. Wear your red contact lenses, Ramsey. Ah, shills rock red eye contacts for Valentine's Day. <laughs> Well, now that I'm, I've been called a shill now by a couple people, uh, it's official, you know, um, maybe I should get some. Maybe I'll tell my uh, optometrist I need to order some red contacts, which I can stick around. That's it. Thanks for being here, brother. The insomnia stream. That's right. Everyone's favorite. Everyone's favorite, Shira. I convinced Jow to spray Pasha and music and he saw what I'm saying. Okay, that's an interesting, interesting. Uh, maybe tomorrow, maybe when I get a chance, uh, you know, late at night, I'll just hit them, hit my wrist with each one. <clears throat> Thanks, uh, Mohammed. I appreciate that, man. It means a lot. Ah, uh, Balenciaga Poro, you can never get enough of that. The article that they did on Fragrantica on it is really fantastic. Try to get a vintage. Hey, Flava Sauce, welcome. Had you started this live stream earlier? My scent of the day was Aklas. Man, you you talk about some fragrances I've never heard of, Alan. It is official. Figment's been discontinued. That sucks. One of my favorite buys from last year. But it's so good for me. Like, I thought, it, actually, here's the thing. I thought it was a miss too woozy when i i smelled it when it first came out actually the note listing scared me so much i used to just buy blind buy all my amouages and when that one came out i was like oh i think i'm gonna sample this and i did i got a sample and i was like nope not for me hell no absolutely not and i wore it to work that day too the sample and um and i just forgot about it until last year i was like i need to revisit this and uh i did and i was like holy shit what was i thinking like you know maybe in 2017 my nose was still too much of a virgin i don't know has anyone tried the parfum oh god i don't know what i would say to that 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 i have not tried it but i know it's out there it has a bit of gucci envy yeah i see what you mean there like an outdoorsy gucci gucci envy right Ah, you bought vintage Jovan Sex Appeal. What a fragrance, man. What a fragrance. Um, I may not be able to find my bottle. Ah, yes, I will. Yes, I will. This is uh, so good. It's just patchouli and spice and everything nice, but it's fantastic. If you like... Uh, Givenchy Gentleman Eau de Toilette from the 70s. This came out like a couple years after. This came out in 76. And so Givenchy was selling in the higher end stores. This was selling in the gas stations and the in the drug stores. And it's, it's fucking good. If you're a patchouli lover, don't overlook sex appeal. And the box might be one of the best boxes of all time. You can do a 3,000 sub giveaway. I don't really care about giveaways, though. No offense. It's just most people that I see do giveaways do it for because they want the channel to grow and they want subs to subscribe. And a lot of times when subs subscribe for giveaways, they don't interact or ever watch anymore. They just subscribe and then move on. I want subs that are going to be here and be a part of the channel. You know, maybe that sounds I don't know, but. Waiting for my recent purchase. I mean, hell, just if 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 anyone who's a regular is is serious that there's something in my collection they really want to sniff, hit me up and I'll sort you out. Waiting, 
my recent purchases on Saturday. Ah, Perfume Aroma are so nice. I've never smelled any Perfume Aroma still. They're on the list. They're on the list. Who called you a shill? Who do you shill for? Oh, you haven't heard. You haven't heard. I shill for uh, Eugene and Les Epstraits. Oh, and he also tells me what to say in all my videos. Didn't you know? Uh, he uh, he gives me a script and I read it. Yeah, it's true. And um, let's see what else. Did, oh, you know, uh, all these bottles behind me. I didn't pay for these. They were they were given to me by the brands. And uh, and yeah, I'm just a just a cop out, just a shill. They thought my channel was different, but it's not. It's just like everyone else's. So what can I say? I mean, I'm wearing a branded towel over my shoulder. Doesn't that just scream shill? Thanks, man. Appreciate it, brother. I can't wait to get my nose on those mayo fushionis, my friend. And you got to give me your feedback on some of those amouages. I need to get Thundra by Perfume. I never smelled any of them. Has anyone found an alternative to Mugler Pure Malt? Ooh. Uh, well, I mean, it's not really a true alternative, but um, you could try this. Try Animal Animal. It's kind of like, um, I think it's probably more like the regular Amen by Terry Mugler, but there's maybe a hint of pure malt here where it's not listed in, uh, you know, where it's not listed in um, just regular uh, Thierry Mugler. Amen. I love it too, Michael. Absolutely love it. I am, I am in, I am in love with Figment Man. And you know what the best part is? I got it on FragranceBuy.ca for like. 120 bucks or something for 100 mil and it's the older version i guess they're, i guess they're not making the new one anymore i don't know but oh god i mean this is one of those i almost just punched myself in the face as soon as i realized what it was and i skipped over it people say naxos i i i have a sample of naxos i'll do a video on it soon all right let's do number two number two is uh actually you guys may laugh about this but I didn't want to include uh, Shalimar because, you know, everyone knows the story of Shalimar. And there's actually a, um, there's a Guerlain coming up later on in the video. And Shalimar, of course, is based around that love story of uh, the Shah, what was his name? I can never remember his name, ever. No matter how many times I look it up, I can never ever remember his name it was um the mughal emperor shah jahan and he made shalimar for his beloved wife muqtaz maha if that's not a valentine's day love story i don't know what is but i'm pretty sure everyone knows that story and so everyone's thinking that they're that you know shalimar is going to be on the list so what did i do i decided to feature de leon at number i rank these but honestly you can you can um just call it 10 valentine's fragrances that fit not really a rank list but i did rank them um and le leon makes the list because of its relation to shalimar there is some similarity between le leon and shalimar you can't deny that however i think that they really amped up the labdanum and with that amping up the labdanum, amped up the smoky qualities of uh, Le Leon. And so um, that's why it made the list, is the relation to Shalimar, most beautiful love story of all time in perfume, as far as I'm concerned. And probably the most beautiful bottle, too. Uh, someone asked me to rank my favorite bottles. And... Um, if I ever do that, I'm just, I'm going to tell you right now, there is nothing that will dethrone Shalimar. That is my favorite bottle of all time. I think it's uh, perfection. So yes, Le Leon makes the list of best top 10 Valentine Day perfumes for 2023. Let me do one more and then we'll catch up on the comments. So 
at number that was number nine. Number eight is actually a um, House of Matriarch fragrance. And I have a discovery atomizer. This is the smaller sample that I have. And since we are talking about Valentine's Day, and on Valentine's Day, we are talking about roses, hence the rose postcard I pulled out. This is Kazemi. So Kazemi, I want to spray this because it's actually been a while since I've had a chance to smell Kazemi. Actually, I might even put this on skin. Let's put this bad boy on skin. It's been a little bit. Good old Kazemi. Let me remind myself of you. So I have a discovery atomizer too that I want to talk some, I want to talk about these uh, House of Matriarch fragrances more, you know, at some point. I want to bring them up or maybe do some uh, live streams on them or whatever it may be. Um, I just think they're so qual such a quality house, you know, you clearly get the rose and it's like a salty rose, but it's like, there's this, it's like an animalic rose because she's dosed it with, um, uh, hyracium and oud and ambergris and spices. And, and there's like 12 types of roses in here. Um, Rosatar, Bourbon Rose, Rose, Rose Otto, White Rose, Wild Rose. I mean, it's like the rose fragrance. And, um, you know, probably full bottle worthy. Uh, but since I have a Discovery Atomizer, which I think is 10 mils, it's probably more than enough for me. But uh, Kazemi is a very good rose fragrance. Is anyone familiar with it? Thanks for putting me on the Balenciaga Fragrantica article. It's fantastic. Naxos is like pure Havana. Ah, okay. Protect Ramsey at all costs. <laughs> uh, thank you. You know, honestly, I have been, uh, I've been, uh, I've been blessed with the gift of not giving a fuck what people think about me. And sometimes that's a bad thing because sometimes, you know, it turns into, why are you so not respectful of my feelings? But, uh, and there, there's a Valentine's Day argument for you. But most of the time, it's a good thing in situations like this because, hey, you know, you're just, maybe you're just not right for the channel, buddy. Nanban, and she loves it. Nanban. What is Nanban? Nanban. Ah, it's that Arquiste everyone's talking about. I That's another brand I haven't smelled before. That actually could have made my tea list from yesterday, Shiva. Uh... That actually could have made my tea list from yesterday. There's a black tea note in there. I bet you I would really like that because it's got osmanthus and I love osmanthus and it has um, leather and coffee and styrax. That, that looks really good. Do you love it? It's got some vintage Old Spice. Eat your heart out, Creed Viking lovers. I do love Creed Viking. And I've got 500 mils of the stuff. So Naxos is too sweet. I don't even mind sweet like most of you do. But damn, really, that's a bad sign. Speaking of Amouage under Christopher Chong, is there any truth to the rumor that he was fired, asked to leave because the creative concert imitation was offensive to the Middle East? Imitation offensive. Why? Why was it offensive? The creative concept of imitation was uh, his childhood growing up in New York City in the 1970s. I think that's why there's that vinyl note in there. It's supposed to give you that record. It's supposed to give you that, um, you know, almost like this. Oh, that's so good. It's supposed to give you this like... Um, you know, this record player vibe. My friend says it smells like bug spray. Which which one? Roja UAE Oud. What are your thoughts? Uh, I think I did a video on that, mate. I, I'm pretty sure. I'm like 99% sure I did a video on Roja's UAE. And I liked it. I said, I, I if, if it's the one I'm thinking about, uh, I said that that is one of the Roja's I would, I would still want to own. But... 
I just refuse to give Roja any more money. He's taken enough of my money. You know, if I'm going to drop three or 400 bucks on a fragrance now, that money's going to Russian Adam or someone like that. What Roja should I buy? I mean, I did a, I did a Roja family portrait, which was one of my first videos I ever did. And then I did a ranked Roja family portrait where I actually ranked my favorite. So you can go check that out. Six o'clock in the morning, starting off the day with rant. It's going to be a good day, Poe. I like it. Duncan like Naxos. I have a sample, so I'll do a video on it one day. My wife says LDDM smells like Raid. Wow. I've never heard that. And I hate sweet. <laughs> okay, so there is hope. Maybe I will like it. Outrageous. I'll take Pure Havan, sold Naxos. I like Pure Havan. I'm not going to lie. I like it. Hello, Lynn. Good evening. Is there any way to know Amwise reformulation version from the box? It's, uh, yes. I mean, you can. It's a little sketchy. So, like, here's here's the new box of uh, Portrayal, right? And if you take a look at the bottom, now, this is still before they started putting, you know, this is still, this was the original bottle of Portrayal uh, when they were still putting the name on the collar and not on the front. And if you turn it over on the back, you'll see it says Mwaj S-A-O-C right here. Um, and the older Mwajs say, so this is an older bo um, box of Epic Woman. And if you flip it over, it doesn't say Mwaj S-A-O-C right here. It says Oman Perfumery LLC. So it basically the um lineage went something like this originally the early 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 bottles so if you find something that's really old like um like this version of gold you can't see because the camera's shite but it basically says sultanate of oman so if you pull up like this is the original Mwaj bottles, these right here. And if you actually flip them over to the bottom of the bottle, I don't know if you can, you probably won't be able to really make that out, but it basically says fragrance made in Oman, perfumery LLC, Sultanate of Oman. That was like the original. It was owned by the Sultan of Oman. Then it became the Oman perfumery LLC. Then it became Amwaj S A O C as they continue to sell off more of the company. Um, so yeah, you can tell, um, but it's it's not easy. It's not an easy thing to kind of track down the the Amwajs. And even some of my older bottles say Amwaj S A O C. I mean, they're still old. But I think that Oman, uh, Oman, what did I say? I said Oman uh, Perfumery LLC. I think that Oman Perfumery LLC um, dates back to like a decade or before. And they were doing great stuff. I mean, I, I wouldn't worry. I would just say Amwash did really good reformulations up until... They started putting the names on the front. That's a good rule of thumb. Animal, animal smells like a football. What? Taif, Herods, and UAE are siblings. Animalic and Oud Floor. There's a lot of Roja Middle Eastern lines that are siblings. I never got that dunk. See your top sweet gourmand list. Maybe you could do it that for your 3,000 subs. I don't have very many sweet gourmands that I like is the problem, Jimmy. All right. Thanks for being here. Out of the Middle East line, Roja Qatar. I have not smelled that one, Daniel. That, that kind of makes me sad. The one I haven't smelled you think is the best?
you know, if we go into like a recession, I think you're going to see more stuff like Scott's talking about. People selling off their old stock. Roja Bahrain was, ah, okay, some, some, I, I don't think I've smelled Bahrain either. Bracken Man is no longer listed on MR's website. I snagged a backup tester. We'll swap caps when the time comes. Tester have been good with having the side writing on them. Yeah, I've got a tester of uh, Memoir Man. It's really it's, it's great fragrance. I just hate not having the cap. Found fragrance World Star Nebula. It's like forty bucks on fragrance buy and smells nearly note for note identical to Pure Malt. It's my alt for Pure Malt and Resurrection Two Wild is my alt for Pure Havana. I know about Resurrection Two Wild. I did not know about um, World Star Nebula. Nice. Thanks for sharing, Jimmy. Should have a, some of these fragrance geniuses in the chat. You guys can have your own channel also. <laughs> uh, some some of these fragrance geniuses in the chat. That would be good stuff. That would be good stuff, Antonio. Shilling for brands by primarily promoting perfumes they haven't sold in years and can't make any money on. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> Yeah, it's my it's my master plan. Uh, it's my master plan business plan. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna promote a bunch of vintage stuff that no one makes anymore. And don't worry, don't worry. There's a there's a brilliant part at the very end. I just haven't thought of it yet. Yes, totally agree. Love Antaeus's bottle. Love Koros's bottle. Uh, love Tetra Alascala's bottle. Ah, okay. There you go. Thanks for that, Shiva. Yep, you got uh, <laughs> got busted, eh? Oh, Rich Mitch style. That's good stuff. Full choke bottle for me. Oh, that is a big unit, mate. Fantastic. One of my favorites, personally, but it's it can be very challenging. Uh, but I would say if you buy it and you don't like it, just put it aside for a couple months, come back to it, put it aside for a couple months, come back to it. You'll, you'll fall in love with it. If you, if you like Amouage's style, the sports, yeah, sports car shifter. That is a coincidence. I just smelled and put on a blast of Kazemi to go to bed with. Came back to my cell and you were discussing it. Kazemi's on the Valentine's day list, Alan. But we are connected by scent, brother. It is a good one. I'm not going to lie. It is a good, probably full bottle worthy rose fragrance, but uh, I don't think I'll be getting one. But it, it's it's good. The Parfum Po Montana Bot. Yes, it is. Very, very good point. Yeah, the, the Tower of Babel. All right, let's do another. Let's see. Where are we in this list? We are at number seven. Ah, now here's the one that smells like you may be skipped a bit you fast forwarded your um you fast forwarded your valentine's day a little bit and enjoyed some of the nightlife first and maybe the smell is still all over you and so this is papillon salome um i couldn't resist putting this in here i do love this and uh, Natalia has been talking about how, I think she discovered this in the last couple months and she's been talking about just how much she loves this scent. And I, I completely agree. I love Liz Moore's work and Salome is just sex on the skin. That's it. That's how Liz Moore's actually described the scent when she did the interview with me is it is sex on the skin. Her interpretation of sex on the skin is what she said. She, Liz Moore said she kept smelling all these other fragrances where the people were saying that it smells like sex on the skin. And she's like, doesn't smell like sex on the skin to me. So this is what Liz Moore's thinks sex on the skin smells like. And uh, I love it. Um, Peter Carter put me on Kazemi. Yeah, he loves House of Matriarch. Kazemi is a very good rose, spicy, 
Uh, I like the fact that it's animalic. It's multifaceted. It's um, it's good. It's it's many layers, you know. It's deep. It's a good rose fragrance. It's uh, it's kind of one of those like, you know how some fragrances are too, like um, too. I don't want to say commonsensical, but but like they're too forward with their plot. This is clearly a rose fragrance, but it kind of takes a winding road to get there. If that makes sense. There's a lot of other stuff to smell and, and discover. And I like that about it. It's good. And I like the way that the House of Matriarch does like oud and uh, animalics and stuff like that. She's she, She's got a good house. Just overpriced, but a good house. Oh, God, dude. All three? All three? I'm looking at into Arquiste L. Some say it's like Antaeus. What? I gotta I gotta sniff this Arquiste line. Yes, Michael loves mist. I love mist too. I mean, it, probably the if you love interlude man, you'll love myths. Um, you know, some people call this a baby interlude man, and I see what they mean because of the way that everything is kind of blended together um but it's it's its own fragrance they don't really smell alike but they feel alike if that makes sense let me ask you guys this this came up in a in a stream i was watching earlier someone said that if you don't like clone fragrances that you are engaging in class warfare and almost fell out of my chair of course i didn't say anything because we sit on different sides of the political spectrum let's say person who was presenting and i i think that's a little bit ridiculous um i don't think if you dislike clones you're engaging in class warfare i understand some of these fragrances are expensive and i understand people wanting to participate but like what Rich Mitch says about clones being theft, I sort of kind of agree with them. I mean, there are clones that I actually have smelled and liked and ended up buying. This is probably my favorite clone of all time, La Yukawam. I think it's a fantastic take on Tuscan leather. I would wear this. I would actually wear this over this Parfum de Marley Godolphin that I tested for the first time. Um, but the whole engaging in class warfare thing, I think he was a director for 15 years and it just run its course. You become the scapegoat after a while. Yeah. Send you Roger UAE for free. Thank you, Daniel. It's very kind of you. I really like it. I don't love it non-bond, but I'm on my Bortnikoff journey before it becomes too warm. <laughs> you have a three mil sample in the parcel. Thank you, Shiva. Appreciate that. Yeah, I've got, actually I have a Bortnikoff I might test tomorrow and do a first impressions of. It's called um, Bortnikoff bon, Bonaire. I assume it's not just Boner. So I'm going to say Bonaire because it sounds like I know what I'm talking about. And uh, so yes, Bortnikoff Bonaire. Never smelled it before, but it smells amazing from the, from the atomizer. So, so yes. Get gold, man. It's the men's version of Shalimar. We don't agree there, Duncan. I don't think gold is the men's version of Shalimar. I think gold is more like the men's version of uh, an aldehydic floral. Like Lanvin Arpege or something. Imitation Man is one of my fave amouages, but apparently being based on the U.S. pissed off some local stake shareholders. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That is literally the stupidest thing. If that's true, if that's true... I don't know what I don't know what it becomes if it's true, but that's fucking stupid. Indigo smoke is an Arquise that I want to try. Smoky black tea. I'd like to try that brand. Everyone keeps talking so great about it. 
Imitation in gold, my two favorite masculine perfumes from Amouage. I love UAE. It's good stuff said about UAE. Folks prefer non-magnetic and made in Oman. Yeah, I know what you mean. And I also found and through a quick internet search that those test tube callus bottles with a 50 and 30 mil bottles are cool, a very cool design. Yes, very, very cool. Um, the the beaker bottle that I have was the 100 mil and the 50 and 30 mils were that test tube. Actually, check this out. Let me see if it'll show on my phone because the lighting in here is so terrible. But um, Manly Sense, Keith sent me this the other day. This was the ad for Catalyst. So, oh God, I wish I could. Ah, can't really see it. Sorry, I tried. But uh, it's basically this guy, which I guess you can kind of see the outline of him, uh, sitting there with the fragrances in front of him, the uh, 50 mil, 100 mil, and then the aftershave and the the little, you know, uh, copy says boys like to experiment. And it's got, of course, all of the chemistry test tube stuff there. Great little design by Halston. Very cool. I mean, nowadays, brand that's more than 99.9% .9 of brands put into their stuff nowadays by far. So it is way overlooked, way overlooked. A sample Naxos due to its hype, loved it, bought a full bottle. Now I find it meh. Still very nice, but I don't love it. Yeah, I could see that. I'll do a video on it sooner or later. I got a sample somewhere. <laughs> if Naxos was less sticky sweet, it'd be a great easy reach tobacco. Sometimes I like sweet tobaccos though, so I may like it. I haven't worn my Naxos in over a year. It's Frederick Mall superstitious. I've never smelled that, Kenzo. There is a mall on here, but it is not superstitious. While I'm not the biggest fan of M. Wash's current style under Reno, and I'm glad he is making the effort to keep the formulations in as good a shape as possible. You're like the first person I've heard say that, Woozy. Most people have been bashing them for, you know, uh, I've heard a lot of people say the reforms have not been good, but I haven't smelled them, so I can't, I can't speak to that. I'm just saying what other people have told me. Definitely an easy reach, Daniel says. I got to smell that soon. Yeah, Jubilation made number one on my, my Amouage list, so... Fishman is destroying the classic Amouages. New Juby is trash. There you go. Top 100 subs. <laughs> Having compared my OG Opus bottles to the newer ones, I think he's doing a good job. Nice. Okay. It's a fair shout. Stay away from new jubilation. Multiple people have been telling me this is why I've been saying that. Yeah, it does suck. Juby is not worth buying in modern form, but it's not just that one. It's the bulk of them so far. Few have been left unscathed. That's ouch. Portrait of a lady. Uh, there is not portrait of a lady or O Capital, but there is a scent that I think is better than both, in my opinion. My opinion. Uh, you should call the channel Connoisseur's Corner or something that expresses that. <laughs> uh, I never named the channel. I just, people know. I mean, you know, I mean, hell, Joy Amin got to 80, 90,000 subscribers with just his name, Joy Amin, and a picture of his face. To the chat, I'm grudgingly considering rejoining Facebook exclusive for the fragrance swaps. You know, I have considered that too, Shiva. I actually don't have Facebook, but I see all these people talk about, oh, I got this steal and this Facebook, this guy wanted to sell this bottle and I got it for, you know, a hundred bucks and it sells for 300 normally. And I'm like, damn, I don't have a benchmark to really compare the current one to, but interlude and lyric and epic smell fine to me. Interesting. Darren Allen, sample set in my pocket. I haven't sprayed anything today. Too many options. 
I got Darren Allen sample set too. We're going to do a live stream on these one day. I'm going to try all four. There's four of them in here. I'm going to try all four on stream. I wore, um, I have a big 10 ml discovery atomizer. Thanks to Rachel of uh, Sheepra number one. I liked it, but I didn't love it. Yes, I have it. I did a video on it. Actually, I did an entire video uh, on Bala Versailles and, uh, you know, Papillon's or uh, Salome came up in that video. They are definitely, that's 100% my comparison, Woozy, 100%. And actually, Liz Moores and I talked about uh, Bala Versailles whenever we did our, whenever we did our interview. So yes, there's no doubt about it. Uh, she had never smelled the pure parfum though. She only smelled the eau de cologne, which is completely different. I sent her some. Got the latest epic mail while it's so good. It's been watered down considerably compared to the old version. I've heard Overture Man is still good. Interesting. Yes, I'm glad you love it so much because so do I. I love this. Um, I think it's... Uh, you know, it, it's kind of telling and and maybe this is like a beacon of light in in the darkness because, you know, she managed to make this scent with all of the regulations and all of the, you know, all, all of the uh, IFRA regulations and everything that we, you know, tend to blame the bad state of perfumery on and she still managed to make stuff like this. So if she can do it, others should be able to as well. It's possible to still make a good fragrance. There you go. Salome is top tenor. It's so good. Got my Avenues tank ready. <laughs> my Aventus. <laughs> I, I actually really like Aventus. Vapid sophism. What does that mean? I'm not smart enough to know what that means, fragrance profile. Latest reflection, journey, black iris, overture, enclave, opus, royal tobacco, beach. Well, opus, royal tobacco came out six months ago. Seeking partials over full bottles. I have so many fragrances over a short time paralyzed to what to wear, but I want more. I always want more. It never ends. Hey, Joseph, welcome, my friend. Place for you. Your wallet won't thank you. <laughs> Someone just said Bracken's discontinued, Enrique. It is a classic. Yes, agreed. My wallet and girlfriend grimace at my fragrance hobby. That's it. I'm with you, Shiva. Clone sold at higher price per mil than the originals are the absolute worst. Arquiste is a bit perfumey like PDM. They have some winners. Misfit is a nice dark patchouli. Nice. I'll have to try the brand one day. Let your girl use those bottles so you both can be happy. That's right. I can confirm new Juby does not last, at least not on my skin. Gorgeous scent. Shame. Longevity is not good. Someone told me it lasted like an hour on their skin. They got a decant. Your bottle of sealed to gum comes from a Facebook group. Ah, yes, that's right. You let the cat out of the bag now, Natalia. No, I'm just kidding. Yes, Natalia has an unbelievable haul sitting in her closet of, of mine. I can't wait for it to get here. There's some real goodies. I used to swap cheapies. It's a loss for all parties involved. $12 to $15 shipping for a $20 bottle. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I paid full retail for that one when it was a Harrods exclusive. Uh, Bengal Rouge. Yeah, I have a sample. Actually, there's a couple uh, Pepillon samples I still have to do. So maybe we'll do a live stream where we'll talk about all of them at, at once. There's still um, Dryad, Bengal Rouge, uh, and a couple others. She wears my fragrances and has confiscated several, including Rose de Jamal. <gasps> Rose de Jamal is on this list, sir. At first, I hated that green tea smell that you smell first when you spray overture, so I sold it. 
bought it again and enjoy that green tea. I don't get green tea. I get grapefruit uh, and animalix, but I don't get much green tea. I think it was a brilliant indie brand, Anubis and Spell 125. Anubis, I would take Anubis over Spell 125. I did a video on Spell 125. I liked it, but I think I, my two favorites from her are Anubis and Salome. Yes, I know what you mean. Um, that's why I decide what I'm going to wear the night before, or else I'll stand here and just be like, it'll take me half an hour to pick what I'm going to wear. Like, I'll look through what I've worn recently, you know, see how many wears I have of Antaeus versus Koros, and then decide to wear, you know, a Creed and then switch to Erosia. And then I'm like, no, I haven't worn a vintage fragrance in a while. I have to pick the night before. Being that you are an expert on the house of Initio. <laughs> yeah, it's my favorite house. Well, I'm a show for them too. You didn't know. Not sniffed original Aventus, sniffed current formulations. Even right. Actually, uh, original Aventus is probably worse than the clones, to be honest with you. You don't even need original Aventus, though. You just need like 2015, 16, 17. You'll get the idea. She loves unspoken musk and sticky fingers. Nice. I've got samples of those, I think. You get similarities with Bengal Rouge and Serge Luton Shed Guy. Uh, in that video that I did, uh, Dunk, she said Bengal Rouge was her take on her cat. And when we were backstage, she was showing, she was showing me her uh her her cat. And um, we were we were talking about Bengal Rouge and she was saying that she actually created Bengal Rouge because she wears Shalimar. So when she pets her cat, it smells like Bengal. It smells like Shalimar mixed with the animalic fur on her cat. All right, I'm moving on. What do you think about Rouge's musk oud? Uh, no, I hated musk oud. Musk oud was my least favorite from that line. That's it. That's that's a great way um, to describe it, Daniel. It is actually really nice for the first hour. Like if you could just respray it every hour, it would be one of the best musk, synthetic musk fragrances around. Thank you, Syntatic. Welcome. Mitsuko, one of the greatest of all time, man. Amber Oud, that, that's probably the best of the three Ouds, in my opinion. He did. The Dark Side is my favorite. I did a video on that one, I think. Oh, God, it's just... I don't think it's worth it. New Aventus smelled like watered-down pineapple. I really don't like New Aventus. I don't own Shed Ghee, but I remember it's very different. Bengal is sticky and dense while Shed Ghee is a bit drier. No similarities. Um, all right, let's let's uh I caught up on the chat. Holy shit. All right, let's see where we're at here. Uh, ah, yes. Actually, next on the list actually is. I guess I should have grabbed this first. Be prepared, Ramsey. Number six on the Valentine's Day list is actually a lesson de modable and it is rose de jamal let's put this one on this hand i did uh kazimi on my left hand let's put rose de jamal on the right hand right wrist just out of curiosity it's been a little bit since i've sprayed this this is a beautiful rose apparently the name is kind of cool too because there actually is a farmer i think he's in morocco and he actually has a rose farm that they actually used his roses and his name actually is Jamal. Oh, that's such a great rose. It's so like natural. It's so green. It's like a photo realistic rose, you know, slightly spicy. It doesn't have the animalic bits of uh, Kazemi. Kazemi gives you more, Hyrax and Oud and, but Rose to Jamal just gives you this, um, 
it just gives you this like picture perfect spicy uh woody rose and apparently there's a little bit of moroccan mint in here everything's moroccan so it's moroccan rose absolute um moroccan geranium moroccan mint uh french lavender they didn't go moroccan there though french lavender which i think is the expensive type of uh, of lavender so the lavender and rose de jamal is top top notch and uh atlas cedar interestingly enough some people compare uh rose de jamal to an Amouage Rose fragrance, which is very high on this list. So I'm going to withhold that information. Uh, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? It's really good. Really, really good. Really? See, I'm the exact opposite. I prefer Rose de Jamal over Iris Pearl. Iris Pearl seemed a little dull to me, Woozy. Yes, Shiva has blasphemed. Shiva, go say 15 Hail Marys. I'm kind of dressed like a priest anyway. I give you absolution. Go sniff as many gear lawns as you can and say you're sorry. Sticky finger sounds like a weed fragrance. <laughs> kind of does. I love that they gave the former the credit they deserve. Yeah, I like that too. It's kind of cool. Um, the lavender is top notch in Rose de Jamal, and it's a very green photo, just a photorealistic rose. Beautiful. Lovely. I've got way too many fragrances one man should ever have. I've added all my scents to a roulette wheel, spin the wheel app. When I can't decide what to wear, I just spin the wheel. That is the most outrageous thing I have ever heard. That's awesome, old boy. That is amazing. That is, that is, that is absolutely insane. In fact, I need to tell Rich Mitch about that tomorrow. If we stay on long enough, he might wake up and join. Most of the perfume aromas I've sampled were way too sweet for me. My favorite were Bindra Patchouli and Fioria de Ambra. Interesting. I haven't smelled that brand. Sticky fingers reminds me of a sweet pastry, like a cinnamon, like a Cinnabon. It's patchouli heavy. Uh, it is Francesca Bianchi. I'm a sucker for Elaine, so it's probably why I love Iris Pearl. Also would explain why I give Agua Vita Forte, despite the horrendous sweetness in the base. Um... I'm trying to think. Oh, woozy. Uh, I did a video on an amouage called Ubar. U-B-A-R. It's discontinued, but it was re-released under Christopher Chong in 2009. Go watch my video on that if you haven't. It had one of the most amazing Elang Elang notes. Um, I would, if you're a, if you're a sucker for Elang, I'm telling you. You can probably still find a vintage bottle for 300 bucks. It's 100% worth it. I'm thinking about grabbing one, even though it's really not, you know, the floral fragrances are not my full bottle style nowadays. There's just something with the way they blend it all together with that like sandalwood desert sand thing. It's just unbelievable. The best weed fragrance slash real, realistic is called Junkie. It's niche. Forgot brand. Nice. Never heard of it. Junkie. Rose de Jamal is a hell of a must-have. It is so realistic and potent. Yes. Yeah, the ingredients are off the chart. I mean, um, between this and the brand that I show for Lesson Demo Dablas, I think that uh I think that Remy and uh you know Antoine have have Antoine Lee have really showed like the rest of the fragrance world what's possible when you're using high quality ingredients and you actually give a shit about you know what you're creating. Yeah, 
I think you'd love it though if you're a Elang fiend. <laughs> wow. That's some niche content right there. Saw you got a sample of Zerjoff Luxor. I'm curious to see what you think of it. I find a powerhouse sour, funky, strong, long lasting. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do like an entire um I'm gonna have to do like an entire like episode on those Zerjoffs, you know, like these lives where I'll I'll try four of them. Um give you my thoughts and then we'll kind of do it all again the next day. See you, Jimmy. Thanks for being here, brother. All right, uh, let's get to number five. Uh, number six was Rose to Jamal. Number five, we're getting into the big hitters. We are getting into the big hitters. So number five is the aforementioned Les Abstraits. And it is La Douleur Exquise. Uh, the reason that portrait of a lady or, you know, um, any of the other rose patchoulis did not make this list because this is my rose patchouli to end rose patchoulis. Um, you know, I still have decants of this. I've got, uh, Eugene sent me like multiple two mil decants so i'm still working off the decants i haven't even sprayed the bottle yet uh, i'm still working off of the decants and i absolutely love this stuff it's so good it's so so good um but this one he did not send me for free this was i paid for this with my own money as soon as i smelled it i knew uh I, yeah, I mean, Desandra's uh, or La Duleg Skis would be the two that I would recommend. You know, I really like Desandra's, but I have Devon, and Devon for me scratches the same itch. I mean, they're different fragrances, but I could wear them both and be just equally happy. Aramis Devon is, I mean, one of the greatest green sheep for, for men of all time. But this is like... La Dula Exquise may still be my favorite, even though everyone's hopping on the DeSandra's, uh, you know, train. And I get that. I, and maybe one day I will too, but uh, let me just spray this damn bottle. Let's get some air into it. I've been working off of the decants he sent me. Oh. just perfect it's a perfect rose patchouli for me for someone that likes resins and animalics um i mean you just this is maybe for the bad boy on valentine's you know maybe this is for the stand up your date and you just go to the bar maybe it's it's for that kind of guy because there's a little bit of funk in here a lot of resins I mean, it's just a perfect rose patchouli for me, for me, for my taste. May not be perfect for you, but I love uh, La Dulea Exquise. Oh, eternal. Absolutely eternal. And it, and it lasts, um, not only does it last forever, but it transitions. And actually, my favorite part is the dry down. I love the I love when the castorium really comes out in the dry down. Even, you know, you're going to get that kind of metallic, slightly warming castorium that kind of comes to the forefront. Best castorium I've smelled since Antaeus, I'm telling you. I don't know what they did. I don't know how they used real castorium. Um, they used real castorium absolute in here. I don't know how. Like, uh, usually that type of an ingredient is reserved for the real indie houses. Like, I would expect to see that in a, a Riz Doré or, 
Bortnikov or something like that. I mean, the castorium smells of the highest quality. It smells. Yeah, you're probably right. It's probably something like that. But um, it's it's amazing. It's not the kind of note you would smell in mainstream, you know. I have three samples of less substrates arriving in the mail. Oh, you're gonna oh you're gonna absolutely dig it. It's full bottle worthy for sure. For sure, that's the postcard for it. Um, Perfect Valentine's Day postcard. Yeah, agreed, Michael. Tell us your thoughts indeed. My wife uh, liked DeSandra's the best, believe it or not. When I when I let her smell DeSandra's, she went, she grabbed my wrist and went, I like it. Wait a minute. I really like that. That's what she said. And I was like, yeah, it's good, right? Um, oh, God. So, let do that excuse at number, where were we? Number five? Yes. Number four. Oh, God. This one's going to have to go over here. I'm running out of room. We're going to have to go back to the paper. Number four is a gear long and probably the most Valentine's Day bottle in the Pure Parfum. Uh, dude, I'm telling you, Shiva, seriously, it is, right? Uh, it's probably worth backing up, honestly. Um, so this is called Shamad. Shamad comes in at number four. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen the Pure Parfum of Shamad but it actually comes in the upside down heart bottle, the best bottle for Valentine's day of all time. And actually probably one of the best bottles of all time. You know, if there was one bottle that could potentially dethrone the great Shalimar bottle in my mind, it might be uh, the pure parfum of Shamad. This is actually really grown on me. This is one that took a while for me to understand. It's a very complex fragrance. And the first time I smelled it, I don't think I really appreciated it. I think, I actually think getting to know this scent, have you guys ever had this where a different scent, but in a similar, maybe like profile, helped you to understand a different fragrance? So for this one, um, it was this. It was actually Dior Essence. And interestingly enough, Dior Essence and Shamad both came out in 1969. This is Jean-Paul Guerlain, obviously. And this is Guy Robert, who also made Gold Man and Amouage Gold and uh, Equipage and all that good stuff. And um, now that I've learned to appreciate uh, Dior Essence. I think I appreciated Dior Essence more than Shamad for a little bit. Now I would say they're probably neck and neck because I'm starting to really understand Shamad. Shamad is very, um, it's very complex. I would say, excuse me. It's very complex. I would say it's got that, um, green galbanum in the heart, beautiful green galbanum and aldehydes and florals and ambers and benzoins and resins. And that Vanilla, of course, that you expect, but it's very floral and green, but it's almost like there's, you know, the layers in the heart that you see that upside down heart, pure parfum. If you go look up the pure parfum bottle, you'll see what I'm talking about. It has these grooves and it's almost like each groove is a layer of the fragrance. It's very, um, it's wavy and it moves a lot. You know, it's like something moving under the skin. But it's very, very beautiful. And um, probably if you were picking one Valentine Day bottle, it would be the Pure Parfum of Shamad. Ooh, no, I don't think she would, but she's not like us. I mean, it, I think you could wear it, Lynn. 
uh, as a frag head, I think you could wear it. Have you tried? I've never tried a florist. That's another brand I've never smelled. Never smelled a florist. I have a tester of the Pure Parfum, which is better because it comes with a sprayer on top. Ah, is that in that square bottle? Is that that little square bottle, Woozy? I'll wear YSL Loman Tense on my on my flight to Houston with my wife because she likes it. I think it smells like a knockoff Dior Home Intense, even though it has no iris. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Oh, emotional impact for sure, man. Yeah, emotional impact for sure. Uh, thanks for that, Doc. I've, I've actually never smelled the uh, poor home, interestingly enough. It's very expensive now. Ah, you lucky dog, you. You lucky dog, you. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. All right, let's see. What do we have next? Ah, yes, we have an uh, X-ray. This one I'm not going to spray because it's uh, kind of expensive, and it's a pure parfum, and or it's an X-ray to parfum, and I don't have any space left. I don't have any skin left, so we're going to hang on to this one. Uh, but I will show it to you at number three. It is Paris Monte Carlo Rose de Taif X-Ray. Now make sure you get the X-Ray because if you don't get the X-Ray, it's not, it's not the same for me. This is the one you have to get. The X-Ray is, uh, it's very good. Uh, it's a lemony rose. Of course it's, Rose to Taif. Taif Rose is very lemony. And um, uh, for the longest time, I thought this was maybe my favorite take on Taif Rose until I discovered Russian Adams Malik Al Taif. Oh, God, that is the best Taif fragrance I've ever smelled. But it's impossible to find. I'd love to find a bottle one day. Um, but Rose to Taif X ray is. Uh, Taif Rose with Damask Rose, Absolute. And they, they did use a little bit of geranium to try and, um, uh, I guess, to try and keep costs down, you could say, because geranium imitates that rose smell. But it's a very well done imitation. There's a little bit of spice, with nutmeg, and they've amped it up with uh, lemon and musk. But it's a beautiful rose, fantastic, fresh. I love wearing this in the heat. Um, so Rose de Taif by Paris Monte Carlo, fantastic stuff, just very expensive in the, in the X-ray, but it is a 50 mil. So I decanted some of this to Rich. I think he said he liked it. I can't remember. Um, but yes, it's very good. Very nice. Good stuff. I'm a fan. Rose. Sorry about that. Had a frag -a -lanch. Nothing broke. LDE gives me the dark before the light. I get the castorium right off the top. Maybe I got the bottom of the barrel, special reserve. Yeah, normally uh, most of the cast, I mean, I do get some animalics at the at the top, but it mostly feels like resinous animalics. I don't really get the hardcore castorium for hours and hours in, four or five hours into the fragrance normally. Oh, but it's so good. I mean, I've got four pretty amazing things on my wrist here. Kazemi. Um, Rose de Jamal. La du And Shamad. And honestly, La du may be my favorite of the four. I think Shamad is maybe the most elegant. 
either Rose de Jamal or Shamad is the most elegant. Uh, Kazemi has that animalic oud with the rose going forward in the high in the high racium. But there's just something about the rose patchouli of Le Dulé Exquise that just does it for me. Just does. And it has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that I know Eugene, other than the fact that, I mean, I, I know him. And so I was able to get a sample of this early. He did send me a sample. He sent me a two mil sample. Uh, but the bottle I ended up buying my on my own. I love it. I know what you mean. It took me a while, actually. Early on in my journey, I used to think I didn't like Rose. Rose kind of grew on me. <laughs> oh, it's good stuff. Tried Tower? No, I have not. That is one I have not tried. Synthetic? No. Oh, well, you're going to love the top spot on this list, Daniel. Uh, the, uh, you know, they've got a bunch of those, don't they? Yeah, I've never smelled, uh, they've got a oud and they've got a patchouli and they've got a bunch of them. I just, I've never smelled any of the other ones. Number two. All right. This one I'm going to put on paper. So number two is actually a Frederick Mall. And it is... Not the Frederick Mall you're expecting, though. It's another. It's another that's really grown on me. Let me spray this. So I got this partial, and I'm so glad I did. It's in one of the original... Frederick Mall packaging too. It's it's an old, old bottle. I think it's like 20 years old. Uh, this is called uh, Lipstick Rose by Valf Schwiga. And uh, Lipstick Rose is... Uh, it is literally Lipstick Rose, but I swear to God, it's like... Imagine every hot girl that you've kissed or wanted to kiss with that red you know, lipstick or that lip or that, um, you know, pink lipstick, but not the lip gloss, not like the sparkly, like wet looking lip gloss, but like the thick red lipstick, right? With rose. Oh, there's just something about this that is so uh, enthralling for me. I don't know what it is. It's like, I don't know, it's like boyhood desires, you know, like imagining like every single girl with that red lipstick that you wanted to kiss, you can smell it right here. It's it's really, really good. I did not think I would like this as much as I did. <laughs> Completely unisex too. Completely unisex. Um, I don't know if Lipstick Rose has been reformulated. I can tell you that there is a um, note of amber and musk and vanilla, and violet, and vetiver. Those are the notes that kind of go with the with the uh, rose. And so I would say it's kind of this floral, powdery, um, you know, pow makeup-y, powdery feeling. But also because of the lipstick, it has this creamy, chalk, this creamy, chalky feeling to it as well. It's so good, though. I am, I am in love with this. This is a this is a true shocker for me. Um, the only reason I got it is it was because it's a, a pre, well pre, this would be a matte cap bottle if it had a cap, uh, but it's a well before Estee Lauder. It's like the original where they used to put the percentage of the, you know, 12.5% uh, alcohol, 96 proof. They used to put all that stuff on the bottle. These are the really old bottles, and I am in love with this. It's such a playful scent, but it's brilliantly executed. Just masterful stroke. I think maybe my favorite Valf Schwiga, shockingly, and my favorite new rose scent outside of Le Duleix that I've discovered recently within the last year. 
I mean, Ledger Lake Skis is much more me, but just as a, you know, as a experiment to, to smell every now and then, this is, uh, this is really good. This is good stuff. Ah, it's too bad. I do like Lyric, yes. No, I have not tried Giacomo de Giacomo Rouge. Uh-uh. No, I, I stick with Giacomo de Giacomo, just regular old Giacomo de Giacomo vintage if I were you. Interesting. Well, they were filled at a like professional filling. I doubt that that I doubt that that was a uh, actually a thing. Dunk <laughs> the night for Valentine's Day. That's the anti Valentine's Day list. I'm gonna do very soon. Oh, I wish you guys could smell this lipstick rose with me. I I'm telling you. I'm telling you. If you're a guy. Uh, don't overlook lipstick rose. There is something very, um, it really jars the memory. You know what I mean? Like you'll, 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 you'll just imagine or remember every girl with that thick red lipstick that you've ever wanted to make out with. I thought I wasn't going to like this cause it was a blind buy, but since it was a, and since I'm on this pre Estee Louder mall kick and I got this partial for a great price. I was like, sure, I'll just take a flyer on it. And when I got it and I was like, Jesus, that is damn good. French kiss is great. Never, never smelled it. Hey, Palace. Paris does florals and citrus is much better than woods. Those ouds were just boring. Patchouli nosy be is good. All right, see you, Juro. Thanks for being here, man. Amber Gris smells like toilet paper, and the ouds are quite boring. Okay, good to know. So just the patchouli to try. Gotcha. <laughs> yes, I did. I changed the I changed the stream. It's it's like twelve thirty here in Texas, so I'm about to I'm about to finish this and you know, upload this and hit the, hit the sheets myself. Cause I got to work tomorrow too, but I wanted to do it at a different time. So more people would be able to join. My wife hates lyric, man. She says it's old lady, but never says that when I wear Van Cleef and Arpels poor home. Interesting. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean, especially with the florals. And the citruses, because that's what's basically in Rose de Taif. They did a good job. Even if there's only a little bit of Taif Rose, they did a good job. Malik Al Taif is the best, though. Hands down. It's just impossible to find. So, number one, uh, everyone's favorite. You guys already know what I put it as. I'm not going to change it. Number one is Lyric Man for me. Uh, and the reason it's Lyric Man is this is the fragrance that made me want to kind of do this list is because this is a Valentine's day scent for me. You know, it's, uh, if, if I really celebrated Valentine's day, it's what I would wear on that day. If I was going to really celebrate it. Um, it just has such a, it has this, um, this blend of, I would say class, but also this pull value. Like if you like it pulls people towards you because they want to know what you're wearing. Obviously most guys don't smell like this. It's a fresh rose with pine. So it's slightly green, a beautiful angelica note that gets overlooked all the time. Green galbanum. Saffron is a bigger player than most people give it credit for here. It really gives it that middle Eastern like creaminess, right? I did a whole video on saffron. Um, with that amouage, like frankincense, that incense, that, uh, wispy, uh, you know, white Omani frankincense that is so famous 
for Amouage. And this, the story with this for me is when I first got Lyric Man, um, it was one of those small bottles or whatever, like one of those minis that comes in the set. And I put it on, I was like, this is not for me at all. Take it away. Just take it away. It's not for me at all. Uh, I said, there's no way I can smell. This is just a rose. This is just a rose. Like, men shouldn't smell like a rose. Get it out of here. Uh, and then like, as the years went on, I kept thinking about it. Kind of like very similar to what happened with Figment. Like, it's like, hey man, I'm an Amouage. You cannot ignore me or forget about me. I'm coming back into your dreams. And I was like, I have to, I have to buy this again. And uh, I got a great deal. And I was like, screw it. I'm just going to pull the trigger. And as it was very similar situation to Figment, except I never really owned a bottle of Figment. I just had a uh, a little sample. The minis of the Amouages are a little more juice. And uh, but I just once I got the full bottle and had it back on my skin, I was like, why? Why did I ever think this was not for me? Like, it's just. Yeah, I think it was like a traditional I think it was like a traditionally feminine versus traditionally masculine thing in my in my um in my head that I that I struggled with and uh thanks for being here Lynn So yeah so for me that's the number 1 I like lyric man that being said rose incense has something in it that makes me prefer it over lyric I have not smelled that one woozy I did smell uh What was that very synthetic rose fragrance I smelled from Amouage? Um, hang on, I'll tell you. It was, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. It was Crimson Rocks. Crimson Rocks is a huge perfume. That's a rose, sort of, right? Yeah, rose ultimate extract, uh, rose essential, jujube honey, pink pepper, Cinnamon Essential, Oakwood, CO2, Atlas, Cedar, and Vetiver. That is a huge fragrance. Yeah, Toy Boy is a good fragrance. It gets overlooked, but it's a good one. Yep, it's grown on me. Hate when people say, old man, old lady, I'm jealous. What old ladies are you living around? Smell like Diagolev? I would love to come in. <laughs> yes, agreed. Didn't like Lyric. The line threw me off. It was early. So the same thing happened. Exact same thing. It was a weird. It's like a weird combination at first, right? You get this weird lime and angelica and pine. So there's three green notes and then the rose. But, you know, after smelling a bunch of fragrances and coming back to it, uh, I can say I'm truly glad that I did. Yeah, it's a, it's a great way to, I mean, that will get you attention. I mean, if you want attention as a man going out, that will get you attention. I did a video on Lyric Woman, Daniel. Um, it is more, it is more traditionally man, manly, I would say. I think Lyric Woman is, or Lyric Woman is more traditionally masculine in the rose, masculine rose department. Like if you like the old school masculine roses like Actor or Aramis 900, um, Lyric Woman is more traditionally masculine. Lyric Man is more traditionally feminine. And yet I think they work beautifully. Is Lyric Man a solo floor? I, no, I don't think it is because it has all those other notes that I mentioned. But it will come across, especially the first time you smell it, smelling of just a big fresh rose, like a fresh, like rose. And you're going to be like, whoa, this is, this is, uh, you know, extra rosy. It is not for me as a guy. You're gonna, that's what you'll say. But if you give it time or come back to it, you'll, you'll realize the beauty and power of it. it smells like a grandmother. You know, I like I said, I thought that too at first, and I'm glad I came back to it. Silent, sir. Yes. 
There, there's another one. There's also a beautiful rose in Antaeus, but you know, Antaeus is known for its castorium. I don't find lyric woman more masculine. She is definitely more sensual, while man is more sensible. I get that. Yeah, that's that's a good way to describe it. Yeah, lyric woman's good. They're both good. Lyric man could only hold that first three minutes for the life of the fragrance. It would be the best fragrance ever. So that's an interesting shout, Jacob. Um, if it could hold it for the first three minutes. Let's see if I have any skin left to spray this. We'll put it in between uh, Ledularic Skis and uh, Kazemi. I'm just going to smell like a rose tonight. It is very, very clean rose. Fresh, clean. Yeah, I'm getting the incense more right from the beginning this time, but also I'm fighting with Ledula Exquise and Kazemi. It's beautiful. I have no clue. None. Oud Sad Mood Extra has garnered more compliments than any other fragrance I have from men and women. That's pretty sweet too, isn't it? I've never smelled that one. I do like MFK's regular Oud though, just the EDP. That's one I, I want to try one day. Ah, uh, greetings, Sonny. Josie's back. We're still streaming almost two hours in. Oot Satin Mood's a banger. I haven't smelled it. I just sprayed Lyric Man to reevaluate it. I don't mind the opening and mid at all, but the dry down just turns so ladylike on me. Yeah, it is tradition. It's traditional. I think it's traditionally feminine for sure. Um, I think most men aren't used to walking around smelling like that. But then again, I think the dry down brings in that incense more too. So I don't know, maybe you spend more time with it. How long have you had it, Silencer? You might find the tower a bit too sweet, but I do like Andy Tower's work, to be fair. I'm a fan. Um, Lone Star Memories is my favorite from him. Oh, okay, you've had it three years, so it's not a new acquisition. Yeah, I feel like I'm fighting with Kazemi and Ledular Excuse to smell that right now. Shamad is extra beautiful up against these other fragrances. Um, none of the fragrances do what Shamad does. It's really grown on me. I almost thought at first I didn't like it. And um, after discovering Dior Essence and then coming back to Shamad, I really feel like I understand it better. I did the exact same thing. Exact same thing. I was just talking about that before you got here, Sonny. I gave my mini to my mother. Because so I was like, I can't wear this. This isn't for guys. I'm so glad I came back to it. I mean, that's my, that's my number one. Um, Valentine's Day scent. Nice. Dude, Ledulet Excuse is so good. The haters saying that we're shills for liking it have no clue. I don't think they even smelled it. I don't even think they've smelled it. I just think they're talking shit. Do you like Gallagher? Uh, I Amongst the waves, I have a sample of. I haven't done a video on it yet, but I will one day. Still have half a bottle left. I think I prefer Zaharoff Signature Rose, my masculine rose. I really like that one. I've never smelled that one. Dude, I did the exact same thing. Same exact thing probably like seven years ago. Probably like seven or eight years ago. I got, you know, 
the MWAJ mini sample set. When I got to Lyric, I was like, this is going to my mother. Like, I can't wear this. Um, and then, you know, as the years went by, I kept thinking about it, you know, like it was like in my head. I was like, I, I have to buy it again. Yeah, it could be a learned. Um, you can learn to appreciate powdery. You can learn to appreciate a lot of things in perfume, but I know what you mean for sure. Um, yeah, I got to try that. Uh, Rose Kandahar. It is crazy. Absolutely crazy how they change. Yeah, I love Leji Desert. Uh, in the heat, it's amazing too. Nothing. Then again, I can't say I know the house really. I just don't like them. I don't like Initio. I don't like BDK and I don't like Parfums de Marley. I know it's a challenging one. Um, try some of the others from the top 10 list, but uh, try this lipstick rose, man. I'm infatuated with this lipstick rose. It's so good. Well, we're almost two hours in and I do have to work tomorrow. Ah, rose calligraphy. That's a good one. Uh, Armando sent me the regular calligraphy and I really liked it. It was okay. Uh, there was a very interesting saffron flower note in it. Um, and I liked it. I need to wear it more. <laughs> Actually, I have a sample of side effect. Um, it's right here. Side effect. And so, God, sweet. It is very sweet. Uh, I'll do a video on side effect one of these days. One of these days, I'll wear this as my scent of the day and do a video on it. It deserves its own video. That way I can really bash it. No, it's good stuff, guys. Bosman's never coming back. He had it out with me on Instagram, said he was really upset with me. I heard his feelings for saying that Parfums de Marley is, uh, is juvenile. And I basically told him, don't come back, dude. My channel's not for you. <laughs> yes. Are the ones that come on the scene with all the overlap. Yes, that's right. You're exactly right. You are spot on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, from what I've smelled of it, I think you're spot on, Silent Sir. Ah, you're going to be wild, Sonny. Well, you're, you're moving on to some serious perfumery now, though, son. Cassandra is some of the best thing, some of the best new releases, uh, new release perfumery I've smelled in a long time. Is there a calligraphy leather? No, no, there's saffron and rose. Love the subtle rose in Royal Mayfair. Yes, yes, 100%, Jacob. That is, um, that could have easily been on this list, Royal Mayfair. That was one that took some growing too, though, because when I first got my bottle of Royal Mayfair, I didn't like it. I didn't like that eucalyptus, you know, camphorous thing that was going on in there. I think that also has pine in it, doesn't it? Rose and pine and eucalyptus. Um, and uh, it probably took me, I don't know, 30 mils. I probably literally had to go through 30 mils before I started to appreciate it. And then maybe another 10 before I really started to love it. <laughs> I've never smelled Wajon. 
but I, I think they're way too sweet. Uh, I don't have high hopes for that house, but you never know. I don't want to judge a book by its cover. Yep, I'm about to hit the hay. Yes, you need to have some experience for sure. Um, I gave the... Uh, Yeah. Well, maybe you'll change your mind on Lyric Man, too. From the dry downs of all the shit that I've sprayed. Ladula Excuse and Shimato are the two that are just smelling banging right now. So uh, that's also very true. It happened to me too. Early on in my journey, I didn't think I liked vetiver. Uh, and then slowly I started realizing just how much vetiver's in everything. You know, it's it's probably the most used note, uh, along with maybe patchouli. And um... <laughs> you'll buy it, sell it, buy it again. I, I'm with you. Um, and, and, you know, slowly over time, I realized actually I do like vetiver. I just, I needed time. It's one of those notes. Like when you first get into perfumery, you won't as a man, I think there's a couple things you're going to struggle with. Rose is one because you're going to, especially if you're in my part of the world, because you're going to think traditionally feminine and vetiver is the other one, because for whatever reason, it's not an easy, it's not like you can just spray it and you're going to get like this reaction, you know, like when I, when I first really started uh, amassing a larger collection, I would go back and forth between the Amouages and the Aventuses and stuff like that. And I like the reaction it gave people. If you wear Guerlain's Vetiver, you're not going to get that reaction from people. Uh, but you will start to appreciate it for yourself. And once you start wearing fragrances for yourself, that's where you can then come back and really appreciate vetiver scents uh, like, you know, Timbuktu and Ankur Noir and all that good stuff. What happened? You guys cut me off? I don't I guess that's a sign I should probably go to bed. Yes, that's it. Masculine sophistication is actually a really good word for it. Um, it's a great uh, note to wear to work. So like... Um, Um, you know, if you, if you want to work scent, vetivers are amazing for that. Uh, I don't think I've ever smelled Hamdani, Michael, but you can't detect Herod. Dude, Herod is like an absolute beast on me. I wonder if it's been reformulated. First time I smelled Mayfair early on, I thought that might be how Queen of England must smell. Royal old lady was my first thought. <laughs> Isi Miyake, Pulse of the Night is a more incensey, ambery take on Herod DNA. Really? I don't uh, I don't know very much about the house of Isi Miyake. I wore that Isi Miyake everyone wore in the 90s. Um my girlfriend in college actually bought it for me, and that was the scent that I wore for the longest time. She liked it on me. Uh, before I was a real fraghead, I wore that. What's it called? I can't even think of it. Issy, the Issy Miyake with the yuzu in the top. Um, low Dissy. Lodissi Porom. 
I had it out with a gang of people on social media for being upset at paying two fifty for an issue side effect, only to detect that it smells very similar to the original Lancome Oud Bouquet. It's not new. Interesting. I'll keep that in mind when I do my review. I need to wear this soon and do a review on it. People enjoy the negative reviews. No one says anything bad about anything anymore. I hate the House of Initio. I actually like the House of Parfum de Marly more than the House of Initio. I have not smelled a good Initio. Oud for Greatness is one of my most hated fragrances of all time. But honestly, every time I go to like try to force myself to wear something like this, I turn around and I'm like, why? Why am I forcing myself to wear side effect for a goddamn video? When I'd much rather wear stuff like this still, this Bortnikoff. Um, there's still so much to learn and discover. And wasting my time with this kind of pisses me off. But I'll force myself to do it one day. There's just so much stuff I have to talk about. Like years, years worth of content. My nose is weird. There's some sense that I just can't pick up on. Others smell like bombs. Herod is one I can barely smell. Wow. Interesting. Maybe you're just nose, nose blind to one of the ingredients. Oud for grossness. Oh, it's the worst. Yeah, I, and I've got a decant of it, like a 10 mil or something. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a video on it, but that's another one I have to force myself to wear. It's a good shout, Andy. They are, they're just a clone house. Uh, and not a very good one either. Not a very good one. Well, I think that's it for me, boys and girls. It was fun. I hope you got something good out of this uh top 10. Valentine's Day, my first Valentine's Day video. Um, next year, we'll have to find 10 completely different scents. So uh, anyways, appreciate everyone watching. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Thanks for being here on a whim. I love that I can just kind of flip on the camera and bam, there's at least 20, 30, 50, 40, 50 people here uh, joining me. So it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure and an honor to do this with you guys. So everyone have a good day. If you're overseas, have a good night. If you're where I'm at and we'll catch you next time. Cheers. Bye guys.